Hey guys, this is the dedicated Chia plotting server that I built a few weeks back. It's been running great since. It's producing K32 plots in under 24 minutes, giving me 60 plots per day or approximately six terabytes. When I built this server originally, I used the Xeon E5 2699V3 processor. It's been recommended to me that the E5 2697V3 processor may have been a better fit for the particular workload I am running. So today we're going to compare the two processors, see what the differences actually are, and then give the 2697 a try. And before we get started, please don't forget to hit that like button. This is a brand new channel and every interaction helps. So this is mostly the same build as before, as you saw me build in that last video. The one change I did make since that video is I did double the memory from 64 gigs to 128 gigs. And that just allowed me to do phase one completely in memory. So let's go ahead and remove the 2699. And something else to take note of too is I did get a new heatsink. This is the Dynatron R31 Narrow, and uh, it does have that vapor chamber in here that was recommended to me by a couple of my viewers and has a rating of 165 watts TDP. So these are the two processors we'll be comparing today. On the left, we have the E5 2699V3, model number SR1XD. On the right, we have the E9 2697V3, model number SR1XF. So taking a look at the primary distinguishing characteristics, the 2699 is an 18-core, 36-thread. The 2697 is a 14-core, 28-thread. So you may be thinking right away the 2699 is a better deal. However, if we take a look at the performance differences, the 2699 has a base clock of 2.3 gigahertz, a turbo clock of 3.6 gigahertz, and an all-core turbo clock of 2.8 gigahertz. The 2697 has a base clock of 2.6 gigahertz, a turbo clock of 3.6 gigahertz, and an all-core turbo clock of 3.1 gigahertz. Now, that all-core turbo clock is what really threw me off originally because Intel does not tell you what the all-core turbo rate is on their website. They simply say that both of these chips can go up to 3.6 gigahertz. And that's true to an extent, but that's typically just one core will go up to 3.6 gigahertz. Once all cores are active, your maximum frequency is 2.8 gigahertz versus 3.1 gigahertz. Everything else is practically the same. It's nearly identical. They both support the same memory, DDR4 2133 megahertz up to 768 gigabytes. The only other slight difference is the 2699 has 45 megabytes of L3 cache and the 2697 has 35 megabytes of L3 cache. So with all that considered, we're gonna throw this 2697 in the server and do some plotting and compare it to our performance before. Okay, so we're here with the IKVM console for this server. Gonna go ahead and power it on. All right, starting up. And once we verify it starts successfully, we will switch over to the regular SSH terminal. All right, so taking a look at the plot logs from the 2699, uh, we can see a plot creation time of 23.6 minutes. And if we scroll back through the logs, we see 23.6, 23.7, you know, they are very consistent, just, oh, uh, there's one at 24.6. So they're mostly consistent. There's only one that's actually over 24 minutes, so. And if we do a DF-H, you can see I have the uh, NVM array here. It is two one terabytes in a RAID 0. And then we have our RAM disk here. It's a 112 gig RAM disk. So taking a look at our plotting settings, under the 2699, I was using 36 threads, 256 buckets, and you see I have the uh, second temp directory set to the RAM disk and the first temp directory set to the array. And since this is a 14 core 28 thread CPU, we're gonna change the R value or the threads to 28. So go ahead and save that. I'm going to open a second terminal here and we're going to leave H top up on this one. I'm gonna go ahead and give it a start and then we can tail the plotting log. So we'll let this complete out two plots. That way we have a fair comparison, the initial plot, and then a second plot while the first is transferring. All right, guys, so the first plot has completed here. We have a plot time of 25.2 minutes. And then we can see over here on the bottom left, it's picked up and started transferring that plot out while it begins plotting the second. 
So we'll let it chug through another and see what our second plot time is. And our second plot has now completed. We're at 25.89 minutes. Uh, so we'll round this up to 26 minutes for our calculation. Then there are 1440 minutes per day divided by 26 minutes. So we'll round this up to 56. We'll say the CPU produces 56 plots per day. By the way, if you are looking to build out a Chia farm, whether it's just a few drives or a half a rack like I have, the Digital Spaceport store has a large number of these white label drives in stock and they're doing a variety of deals throughout December. So uh, you really can't beat these prices. If you're interested, I will leave a link down in the video description. Okay, so I put this information into a spreadsheet. We have the $26.99 at 24 minutes per plot and the $26.97 at 26 minutes per plot. And that gives us a total of 60 and 56 per day. If we calculate that all the way out to a month, the $26.99 will produce 1,800 plots or 177 terabytes. The $26.97 will produce 1,680 plots or 165 terabytes. And you can see we're basing these calculations on 1K32 equaling 101 gigabytes. So if you do the math, the 26.99 is two minutes faster. We have an extra four plots per day, 28 plots per week, or 120 plots per month. That's an extra 11.8 terabytes per month. Uh, so if we throw a price into the mix, the 26.99 V3 sells for approximately $85 on eBay. The 26.97 sells for approximately $35 on eBay. So that's a $50 difference. It does produce a strong argument in favor of the 2697 V3. If you can save 50 bucks and your loss is only 120 plots per month. I suppose if you have a dual CPU system, this will double to 240 plots per month or 23.6 terabytes. But you know, the average home user won't be populating petabytes of storage. So the 2697 V3 is probably the better pick. All right, so let me know which CPU you guys would prefer. Would you rather save 50 bucks or would you rather go with the 2699 and get your extra four plots per day? I think I'll be putting the 2699 back into the server as soon as I get some new thermal paste. One other thing we did not touch on is the difference in power consumption. Both of these processors are rated for 145 watts TDP. That doesn't necessarily mean they'll use the same amount of power. However, it's a metric that I didn't bother to measure. But yeah, at this point I'm kind of wanting to build a second one of these servers with dual CPUs. I doubt I'll do that just yet, knowing the plot format 2.0 is coming and we don't know exactly which changes that holds just yet. So yeah, hit that like button before you go. If you have any questions or comments, you can leave those as well. And thanks for watching.